Hi, everyone. This is Rob Gray from ASU and the Perception Action Podcast, back with another article review. In this paper, what I, this episode, what I want to do is talk about a paper that addresses a question I get asked a lot, right? Obviously, you know, my other one of my other main gigs, I work with very high level professional baseball players. So I get last, you know, do the kind of classic motor learning effects we talk about, right? The benefits of external focus of attention, the variability, uh, the role of variability of practice, you know, these the role of choice in an autonomy in practice. Do these things really still apply when you get to an elite athlete level? Are they really more just for novices, right? Are they going to really mostly have their effect on novices? And, you know, this is built up from the study of fact that most of the studies we we do are not on truly elite athletes, right? Although there are some on focus of attention, right? So this is, I think, is a fair question. So in this, today's episode, what I want to do is focus on a study that's looking at testing the predictions of optimal theory uh, for basketball shooters and particularly looking at experienced athletes instead of novices, okay? So for those that don't know, optimal theory is theory proposed by Gabby Wolf and Rebecca Lefway. I have a whole episode interviewing them. You can go back and find if you're interested in. But it basically uh, talks about optimal performance through, that stands for optimal performance through intrinsic motivation and attention for learning. Really, it's learning can be influenced by two uh, factors, right? So enhancing expectancy and autonomy support. So expectancy is, you know, the it's feeling like you're going to be successful. That was manipulated through illusions and things like that which are in the golf studies. Autonomy support, you know, letting you have some choice in the matter, controlling your own practice. And then the third component is attentional, right? Obviously, Gabby's long history of work on external focus of attention, right? So what they're proposing in these series is these things have their own independent contributions, right? You're, you learn better with... Um, enhanced expectancy with more choice and autonomy and with external focus, but they also have additive effects, right? When you have two of the things together, it's going to give you a bigger effect than when one alone. Okay. And then this paper, they start by reviewing all the different, you know, research on it. And they point out there's, there's kind of a lack of research on, on more skilled populations of athletes. Most of it's on novices showing these benefits. So they're addressing the very question, as I mentioned, that, that I get asked a lot. So they're going to look at how autonomy support, they're going to let people control and have some choice over their practice and attentional focus can interact to affect training of free throws in basketball. Okay. Um, interestingly, uh, they have a kind of a twist a bit on the focus part. They're going to include an internal condition, an external condition, a control condition, like most studies in this area. But they're also going to add a holistic condition. A holistic focus of attention is one of my favorite tools that I've talked a little bit about on the podcast here and there. But a holistic focus of attention is where you get an, to, an athlete to focus on kind of the old overall quality of a movement. So uh, focus on how smooth that movement was, right? Um, so it's it's um, instead of focusing on the outcome or focusing on internally on how the outcome is generated, it's kind of a totally different focus, okay? And they're hypothesizing that having self-control practice would lead to greater 3-4 um, accuracy than... So what they're doing in this case, they're giving athletes over the choice over the color of the ball they use, right? And they're they're having the classical manipulation, the classic manipulation where you have a yoke group that for each one that chooses a certain color, a person someone in the opposite group just gets assigned that color. Okay, um, they're talking about external. They predicted external attention would and holistic attention would both be better than internal or control. And then the fact that they, they predicted that you get this combo, this additive effect that's predicted in autom op optimal theory. Right? Those, so that, that's what they were trying to achieve in the study in the Mullen goals. So they had 56 participants, um, you know, 20, 28 men, 28 men, women. Uh, they're sampled for people who had played basketball for 10 years and then were present in the first division adult league. So they're experienced. Of course, we're still not even close. We're not close to talking about elite athletes, but more obviously more experienced than it is used in most studies. Like a lot of basketball studies I've talked about in the podcast, they use this scoring system. So instead of just having a ball go in or not, which is not sensitive enough, they talked about a swish being five points, a ball hitting the rim and going in for four points. Ball hits the rim, you get three. Um, it hits a backboard but doesn't go in, okay? Um, and then all the way down to zero if you get a complete air ball. Right? So they have a different scoring from zero to five based on how close the ball is to going in. 
Okay, so that's the basic design. They did that before and after the manipulations. So they start off by splitting those 56 participants in two groups, the, either self-controlled or yoked. Um, the self-control group got to choose, the, as I mentioned, the color of the ball. It was either red, green, or blue they practiced with. The yoke group got assigned the same ball color as someone else in the other group, right? And then within each of those groups there, um, so the the uh, for those in, in the stats minded, the choice or the the, the well, choice or autonomy was a between subjects factor. So half did self controlled, half did yoked. Then within that, uh, there was a within subject factor of attentional condition. So everyone participated in all four of the attentional conditions: external, internal, holistic, and control. Okay, and obviously in separate separate blocks. So that's the basic design, very basic design. Um, here's the specifics of the procedure. An internal focus, they were, they, they were given the instruction, as you try to have your best shot, try to mentally focus on opening your elbow during the free throw shot, right? So focusing on the technique, focusing internally on your body, classic manipulation. Number two, uh, external was, as you try to have your best shot, try to focus on mentally, try to focus on mentally the basket and the ball trajectory during the throw. So focusing on the outcome, the effect your movement is having on the movement of the ball, which is a classic external focus. The holistic focus, they're told to, to instruct it to, as you try to have your best shot, try to mentally focus on the fluidity of the whole action during the throw. So they are focusing, with a holistic focus, they are focusing on their own movement, but not the specific details of it, what their arm is doing or what their wrist is doing. They're focusing on kind of the overall quality. Sometimes you get to focus on the speed, the fluidity. You know, there's lots of different ways to do holistic focus. I've done a couple episodes if you're interested. Uh, have, a, have a look back at those. And then they had a control condition where they just tried to have your best shot. So kind of a very standard design. They did uh, 20 free throws under each of the attentional focus conditions. So that was 80. And there was five minutes between. And they were randomized counterbalance across groups. So it's a good design. They also used the standard manipulation check where asked, people afterwards, how much they complied with the instructions, which is, you know, I've never been a huge fan. I've always been a dual task man myself um, uh, for manipulating attention because I think you can, it's more direct and, and uh, manipulation checks, you know, I don't, I think it's better than nothing, but it, it, there's some doubt whether you're actually asking, getting people to do what you say. But anyway, that was what was done. Okay. So that's the basic procedure. The results. So here are the results, the free throw accuracy in terms of points. So they kind of two kind of basic overall effects. One is overall, you perform better in the self-control condition when you got to choose the ball color um, versus the O condition. And so that was the, the effect of this choice. There was also effect of overall effect of uh, tension, right? So the external and holistic groups did better than the control and internal groups as predicted. There was no difference between the external and holistic, right? So self-control, here's in word, self-control outperformed a uh, yoke group regardless for all instructions overall. Uh, both internal, external and holistic was better than internal and control, okay? Um, the only thing they didn't find, they didn't really find an evidence of any kind of additivity in the effects, right? So having uh, uh, a, if we go back to the graph, right? Having a self-controlled external, um, was not better than, you know, was marginally, self-controlled holistic was not better than a yoke consistent. Self-controlled external was not significantly different than a self control So if the, when they did those conditions, kind of pairwise conditions within uh, specific conditions, they didn't find an evidence of adding external and choice was more than, greater than doing each independently alone. So they give kind of partial support to the optimal conditions. So they partially support um, the benefits of the opt optimal, the, the things. Um, they also further um, show the benefits of beyond just what, I think you can think of a holistic as kind of an external focus. Um, they show the benefits of that focus. Um, so I think that, that which is supports previous research. Um, so the, they partially support optimal theory. Um, they show for skilled basketball players that added, there was no additive effect. Um, it suggests the benefits of using autonomy support through choice and either external or holistic focus of attention to improve motor performance and learning. Here, they're not really, this is not really looking at learning. They didn't train people in these conditions and measure the change. It was only the, perform, the performance in this test, right? So 
So I made me, I said pre and post earlier. There was no pre and post because they just measure the performance shooting under different conditions. So it was more a performance test than a learning test. Okay, so I think that's an interesting study, and I guess it partially addresses the question I raised at the start. Do these effects work? Um, for me, I find as I go higher up, the you know I I think you know there's more subtlety needed in in these decisions. Um, I also find you know the, the idea of choice. I think you know elite athletes are one of the ones I work with. Having a completely relevant irrelevant choice like ball color. I think we're, I personally don't see much gain in that, you know, um, much benefit of that. I think they can see through that. Obviously, we let them choose to hit with whatever bat they want, what other color. I think that's more important than making them choose what ball do you want to throw, right? What I've been really using, uh, what I've been really moving towards is I, I like to give athletes some choice that's relevant, right? So what drill are you going to do next, right? So it's it's relevant, not just some irrelevant choice like the color of the bat or the ball or whatever. And the expression I've been using a lot is what I is called constrained choice, right? So you know I think in in when you're working with elite athletes and, and I've talked about you know we really need deliberate, targeted, individualized training. If you just let them do whatever they want for a session, there can be some benefits to that, but in general. They're not going to choose one of those things on their own very often. They're going to choose something that gives them, makes them confident, makes them feel good, which there's room for that. But I think it's better to say, okay, here are three possibilities for what we're going to do in this next block of session. Pick one, right? It gives them the choice, but also you can focus it on something you want them to work on. Um, you know, and the use of a focus of attention cues, I think this holistic is showing again. Um, I think, you know, as you get to a higher level and you're trying to get optimized performance, I think we're seeing more individualized differences of what people need to work on and what they're working on. You know, sometimes, you know, we need to, I, I uh, um, we're keeping, you know, we're training people and we need to you know, direct them to how a ball feels in their hands, right? How do we do that without talking about their hands, right? Um, as, as I mentioned in my last my last book, right, jumping through hurdles to try to make an obvious situation where you need something internal, making it external seems to be silly to me. I'd much rather give make sure the last thing they think about is external. So for me, I do think the principles of motor learning apply, right? Va variability I've talked about before. Instead of broad variations in the task, focusing it more around what the athlete needs to work on, the pitches they have trouble hitting, for example, focus variability, instead of having broad variations. So I think for me, the rules still apply. You're just using them differently as a, in terms of choice and autonomy and in terms of attentional focus. But I think this is a good study showing, showing some of these effects. The benefits still exist for people that are already pretty good basketball players. Okay, that's it for today's episode. Uh, um, thanks for joining me. Cheers for now and keep them coupled.